When talking about innovation with food and beverage companies, there is this tendency of managers and entrepreneurs on focusing only on product innovation. Product innovation is very important by definition, and product innovation can be applied, can be deployed in many different ways. But what is important to me is that companies tend to focus a bit more on value proposition innovation, innovation in the value proposition. Because what customers buy is a combination of benefits, and benefits are always related to sacrifices. This is the concept of value proposition, a set of benefits related to a number of sacrifices that consumers have to make in order to get those benefits. So if we consider value proposition as a ratio, the innovation can be pursued in many different ways. By increasing the number of benefits, by decreasing the sacrifices, or by a combination of the two. Or you can consider a different way to decreasing the benefits and a more than proportional decrease of the sacrifices. Because another tendency of many companies is considering innovation as adding something, adding benefits, innovating on benefits. But sometimes if a company is able to simplify the value proposition for some consumers into the market, it can be very valuable. So in any case, thinking of the value proposition and how to innovate the value proposition basically means how to innovate the ratio between the benefits and the sacrifices. A good example of simplification is in the wine industry. Wine is a very old traditional product, and especially in European countries, where it is consumed since centuries ago, or maybe uh, thousands of years ago. So in this case, wine should be considered very easy, very uh, traditional, very habitual in the consumption patterns and practices of many consumers. But the evolution of the competition in the wine industry has made this product sometimes very complicated. Many consumers perceive wine as a product category to be, consumes all, to be consumed only by competent consumers, which basically means co many consumers think that they need a competence in order to understand and appreciate wine. And if it is the case, this basically prevents many consumers from consuming the wine. So the idea is, how can I simplify the wine? And one example, which is now a very a, a traditional, very, very powerful case study, is Yellowtail. Yellowtail is considered one of the best examples in how to simplify the wine, how to make it easy or easier to drink for consumers. The story says that Yellowtail is a brand uh, owned by an Australian company called Casella, which has been very successful, especially in the US market, which is the second largest market for <coughs> wine consumption in the world, because they tended to simplify the product. And not the product in itself, but basically the way consumers perceive the product. So if you think on a label of a wine bottle, a bottle of wine, there is a concentration of information which is impressive. And usually this information is what prevents consumers from approaching the wine. Because to understand many parts of this information, <coughs> a consumer requires some competence. So Yellowtay basically took most of this information away, simplifying the assortment and making the wine very easy to appreciate and drink. And which basically means many, very easy to choose. Because by simplifying the information you give to your consumers, your consumers can find easier to make a choice. So the point is, which are the components of the value proposition that I can innovate in order to give consumers more value than competitors? There are many different ways. The typical one is product innovation. So when we talk about product innovation in food, it means basically ingredients, methods of production, so a very technical innovation. But we don't have to forget that consumers consume products in specific occasions of usage. So that basically means that a great innovation, which is a market innovation, is to persuade consumers to consume the product in a different occasion of usage, of different from the one they are used to. Let me give you an example, the beer industry. In the beer industry, maybe the two most important product innovations in the last decades are non-alcoholic beer, which, is, which has become in many countries the most drunk beer. If you think that the US, one of the most important markets in the world, the market share of non-alcoholic beer is larger than that of alcoholic beer. The second one is craft beer 
Obviously, craft beers are very traditional. So where is the innovation? Craft beer is basically the beer as it was made in the past. But again, it's a market innovation. A market innovation because these beers that usually are pr produced by microbreweries, very small breweries, very local breweries, it's a matter of lifestyle. I mean, if you drink a, mic if you drink a, a craft beer, you basically share the same values of the producer. So it has much more to do with the values, obviously also the taste, but it's sharing some values with the producers which make this kind of beers. So this is product innovation in beers. But let's focus on a more recent innovation. Let's focus on one company which is Heineken. The two latest innovations of Heineken has been the keg and the sub. The keg is a small barrel of beer, which is five liters, and basically the idea here is not an innovation in the product, because the product is always the same, but it's innovation in consumption of usage. Many people have parties at home, and at parties at home they buy a lot of bottles of beer. So in this way they can buy only few barrels, few kegs, and this is a way to help them in getting the benefits they want to get. And the second innovation is the sub. The idea of the sub is exactly the idea of the espresso coffee machine. That is to say, you buy an espresso machine and then you make coffee by using capsules or other ways of producing coffee. So the idea of the sub is you have your machine at home and you buy the uh, capsules, let's call it, of beer that you can include in your machine to have your draft beer at home. So also in this case, the innovation has not been a product innovation, but it's an innovation in the occasion of usage. You can have your own draft beer at home. Then there is the distribution innovation. So you can innovate in the channels of distribution. In this case, so again, the product is not changed in any of its features, but what is changed is the way the product is you know, provided to consumers. For example, by selling online instead of offline, there is an innovation. So you can reach different customers, you can reach customers in different uh, ways, and this is uh, the real innovation that you can have. Another, another innovation in the value proposition can be on pricing. So different ways of pricing your products. So for example, you can have different ways of pricing if you sell your product in different outlets. For example, if a mineral water is sold in a vending machine, actually the water is exactly the same. What is new is a combination of the channels of distribution and the pricing system. And can, innovation can be also at the service level. For example, service is very much linked to the package, the portion. If you, again, the product in itself is always the same, but you, if you sell it with different packages, you can, you can provide consumers with a different benefit. For example, in the sparkling wine, in the wine, the traditional size of the bottle is 75 centiliters. But if you sell smaller bottles, you can be more appropriate for the target customers of singles. If you are a single, if you want to consume your sparkling wine at home, you don't like to open to uncork a bottle of 75 centiliters, because if you open it and you don't drink it, basically you are wasting your wine. So if you can buy smaller bottles, 33 or 50 centiliters, it's much easier for you to open it and drink it, enjoy it, without wasting any part of that wine. So it's a matter of service. The package helps a lot in servicing the consumer. So these are many different ways of innovating the value proposition. And the point is, which way I should prefer? So as a company, why should I focus on the product? Why should I focus on the price? Actually, there is no, no best off. I mean, you can choose the best way according to expectations of the target customers you want to serve. So again, by choosing the customers you want to serve, you can understand which are the benefits, that is to say, which are the combination, the specific combination of benefits they want to get, and which are the sacrifices that they want to make. And having this knowledge, you can design an innovative value proposition.